so there has been a resurgence in film cameras as everyone is probably aware of so if you'd want some tips on how to use your own very exciting topic i love film i'm not saying i know everything about it definitely a big good myself but i thought i'd show you my tips and just let you know stuff about film and that world that you might not know about so hopefully this video can help you out if you want to get into it or just have some friendly tips so without further ado without oh, oh. Without further ado, let's get into it. We're gonna start off with cameras. So the different cameras you can get, the different price ranges associated with that, because there are a lot in the market right now and it's hard to know which one is best suited for you. So if you are starting off, I would definitely recommend getting a disposable one. They're definitely the most affordable option. They are about $30 uh, ranges, affordable very beginner friendly it's just a point and shoot so so you don't need to know a lot about cameras it's very light as well so it's very travel friendly if you're going on a trip and you just want to document a few moments that is perfect for you disposable ones are a bit more discreet than the big chunky ones as well definitely less good for the environment though i will admit some of the brands that do with disposable cameras are kodak Fuji film, this random blue one that I don't know the brand of that I have used in the past. Like everything else I will mention in the, the video, it will be linked down below. I don't have one with me right now, but it is pretty self-explanatory. I will go into how to use a camera and stuff later on in this video, but let's go on to a reusable camera, but also still pretty affordable. I've got here with me the Kodak M38, which is a great camera. So you do need to reload in the back with a film. This one actually has a really good flash and very good quality for what the price is. I think it's about $50. Let me just check. Okay, seeing online, you can get these pretty much anywhere. Surf, Dive and Ski sells it for 60 Universal for 70 I think I got mine actually on the Kodak website. But yeah, you can get it in so many different colors. Very user-friendly still. It's a point and shoot. Definitely make sure when you're putting on the flash to see that the light goes up. Each one is slightly different with how you need to put the flash on. Sometimes you need to hold it. As you can see, the flash is on there. Hopefully you can see that. I have accidentally not put new batteries in and I tried to put the flash on. The light didn't come up, but I was like, oh, it's fine. It didn't flash and the photo literally is black. So definitely recommend just changing the batteries. It's not very hard and it'll make the photos look way better. Okay, this next camera is definitely a step up from the last. It's definitely not beginner friendly, but it's not too hard to use and learn this one is the canon eos 1000f and is my mum's from i don't know how many years ago it was so fun when i realized there was a film in there and i got it developed and there's these photos of me when i was about two three years old so cute finding those cute little memories again you load the film in the back here this one does have a bit of a zoom and some setting options here for different aperture and iso for the disposable ones you do need to roll it i've got no film in here so it doesn't matter but and then you'll hear a click sound when it's clicked you can take your photo don't roll unless you're about to take the photo because it may just go off accidentally in your bag or something so that's just something to keep in mind this camera here and most of these like more bulky ones you don't have to roll it just loads already i honestly don't know how much this one is because i did just get it from my mom but there are so many on Etsy, on Amazon, on like literally you can go to your thrift store and kind of find some. They definitely range in prices, but they can be very affordable and good quality still. Okay, I'm jumping onto Etsy and I typed in reusable film camera just to see what comes up, see what kind of prices we're looking at. So, oh, Harman 35mm film reusable. This one my friend has, she loves it, um, and it's kind of similar to this one. Olympus 35 DC film camera 245. Minolta Hymatic F film camera 195. Also the Ilford Sprite 35mm film reusable compact camera in black retro vibes. Um, it's similar to this one. The infamous Olympus Super Zoom 80G 242. That is not bad. 
this one does have a bit of a zoom so that's kind of fun honestly there are so many out there on the market but they can get very expensive because they are such a trendy thing right now so just look into what you're getting hopefully you can get a good deal actually i should have said this before but before you go onto etsy just look or ask one of your grandparents your parents anyone older that may have a film camera because they probably do at the bottom of the boxes they probably have a film camera so definitely check with them you'll get it for free and they probably know how to work the camera so that's just a bonus you should definitely check that out first before picking up your own 35 millimeter lens cameras are the most classic and popular so it's really easy to use and most film works for it and you can get it easily developed that's probably the best to get overall Oh, it says best 35mm cameras of all time are the Leica MA M6 TTL, the Pentax K1000, the Canon AE1, the Nikon F2, and the Olympus OM1. Also, the most famous film camera probably out there to exist right now is the Contax T2. And why it's so popular is because Kendall Jenner uses it <laughs> for that. Oh, wait. Has made the pricing of this film camera go crazy literally a thousand five hundred dollars for some of them i've seen a great autofocus compact camera but i would not personally be going out spending a thousand five hundred dollars for a film camera but each to your own if you want it go for it go cam but that's my take on it i think it is a great film camera i haven't used it personally but i have heard the good but i have heard the but i have good but i have heard the but I have heard good things. Needless to say, I'm happy with my camera. There were a few issues with it when I got it, so we had to get it repaired, which does cost some money too, so I don't know if everyone wants to do that. You do have to manually focus it and it is way more chunky than your compact little camera, but there are options if you do want something a bit better quality and want to test it out also if you are buying it online or at markets or thrift stores make sure it works there are tiktoks which go into depth about how to make sure it works before you buy it the worst thing you could do is buy like a hundred dollar two hundred dollar camera and then it doesn't work it's just cocked it so so i'll leave some links to those tiktoks where it does go into depth about that so for film, I've used the Kodak ISO 400 35mm because my camera is 35mm. And this is great for both light or inside darker photos. You can ask someone at the camera shop or whatever, but the millimeter just needs to match with the camera that you have. The 400 will give you a bit more flexibility in different lighting conditions, but it's not the biggest difference. If you do get a pack of three or something like that, I would definitely recommend putting the rest in a refrigerator. It just keeps it better for when you do put it in to your film camera. If you want to photograph people, 99% of the time it will look way better when you use flash. Trust me, there are tons of images not just taking the damn photo. Even if you take a few photos of that same building, it's not the end of the world. If you get the photo, you get the photo. You know what I mean? Um, but... But yeah, really don't stress about it too much. You're just having fun. Literally, flash is your best friend. It really depends what film photos you want to take. Unless it's in direct sunlight, definitely put the flash on it. <laughs> it's best to be two to four meters away from the camera when you're taking photos of people and even if it's just a building or something. But yeah, definitely recommend flash. It literally makes every photo look so much better. Why I keep mentioning flash is because I feel like it just has a different effect than digital and you can normally take a great photo on your phone but there's something about a film flash photo that you cannot get like anything on your phone or a digital camera so that's why I think it's a bit special and that's what I like to focus on but everything each to their own. Also I think definitely something I should mention is just have fun with it, don't take it so seriously. I think what's it's best is thinking of it as just like you're taking photos on your phone. I feel like because there are, oh, only 27 images and it's so expensive, da da da, that you get kind of wrapped up in. This may seem simple, but if it is a reusable camera and you have to reload film, don't open this little 
don't open it i know you want to <laughs> the amount of times i'm just like eh. but don't open it because it will probably ruin the whole roll of film oh and never leave film rolls in your car like after you've just bought it or something put it in the refrigerator as i said earlier um but like yeah you don't want to overheating because that's just the worst the amount of joy when I get back the film photos because I've like taken over a large span of time and I've forgotten what I've taken. It's so fun to look back at these memories that you probably would have forgotten if you didn't take that damn film photo. Take that damn photo. Literally that's the main takeaway. Just like don't think about it too much. It's not a big deal. Also, you can go onto Pinterest, Instagram, TikTok to get inspiration for what photos you want. If you do want a specific kind of vibe, um, I do that sometimes if I'm kind of stuck for what I want to take photos of. The best thing is just take candids and have fun with it, personally. From first-hand experience, the best photos come out from spontaneous moments with your friends. Also, it will take time to master and learn what you like to take photos of, learn what doesn't work. It is a bit of a learning curve, but when you're over it, it's so fun. Also, take your film camera everywhere because you don't know what you're going to see or what might happen and you just want to whip out your camera and take that damn photo. Literally, this is so easy to bring around. This one... A bit less but I still take it everywhere um, I'm a bit crazy like that but yeah one thing that I'm always wanting to take film photos of and I just have to stop myself is sunsets it just never looks as good as it does in real life or on your phone even on top of actually buying the camera itself you do need to buy a film you do need to get it developed and if you want to print out the photos it does add up just think about that before you buy a reusable one or like invest in the world of film photography because it can be quite pricey and I've realized the developing prices have increased so astronomically I'm literally like where do you get a decent price these days also I do have friends when they get their film developed they also print out the photos like they the people do it for them and that's absolutely fine if you want to do that but personally I just get it developed and then I just go to Officeworks or Kmart or something to print out all of my photos. I've just done that recently. I went to Kmart and you can get it just so much cheaper for so many more photos. So again, do with that what you will. Obviously you have to take another trip to Kmart or something, but I think it's worth it personally. Also, I know it's not that deep, but ask yourself why you want to do it. Is it because you want a cute little film vibe? Is it because you want to get into photography and like you enjoy actually taking the photos? I don't know. I think it's just something to think about before you start as well. You can buy exposed film. You don't know what it's going to look like because there could be streaks in it. could be completely black to be quite honest. I had exposed film and some of them look really cool. It looks like you've just put like a filter on it. Obviously, I didn't realize it when I was taking the photos that the film was exposed, so I was a bit thrown back when I saw those photos, but I've kind of come to like them a lot. So going into a bit of depth of the different settings and stuff on one of these kind of so ISO aperture and f-stops are what you're looking at if you want a light vibe to your photo you want a high ISO low shutter speed and wide aperture there is a sunny f16 rule for photos so you want to set your aperture to f16 and then shutter speed same as ISO so if you're traveling with disposable cameras or just film cameras in general definitely put like and you're going through like a plane and the security definitely put it in a plastic bag i saw this video on tiktok and i was like oh okay i'll do that <laughs> and put it in the carry-on and then just ask the security person to hand check it and not put it through the x-ray because that will ruin the film i actually asked when i went last on the plane um if it was going to be okay and they said it was fine but yeah just make sure to do that because you don't want your film like after all that time of like taking every photo and then you get it developed and you can't see anything so that would be my nightmare i hope you have learned something from this video if you have like and subscribe and maybe i can film more videos similar to this i'd love to do like a film photography challenge if you'd like to see that let me know and i will see you in my next one very shortly bye guys Mwah.